Welcome, and thank you for joining and listening to one of our messages here at Square Root Church. Square Root Church is located in Cooper City, Florida. We are committed to creating true encounters with Jesus Christ. We hope you enjoy this inspiring message from our pastor. Uh, I'm going to be talking out of the book of Daniel chapter 3. Uh, pastor touched up on this a little bit last week during uh, exaltation. Uh, Daniel chapter 3. You could put that up, please. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. I got a lot of verses. 20, I got 25 verses. Come on. King Nebuchadnezzar made, it, made an image of gold, 60 cubits high and 60 cubits wide, and set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, uh, advisors, treasurers, judges, mag magistrates, and all the, uh, all the other provin provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judge judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up and they stood before it then the herald loudly proclaimed nations and peoples of every language this is what we're commanded to do as soon as you hear the sound of the horn the flute the, the zither the lyre the lyre the harp pipe and all kinds of music you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace therefore as soon as they heard the sound of the, of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre. Am I saying these words right? Anyway. The harp and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship this image will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those are my boys, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve you, your gods, nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Now furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Anyway, then what God, uh, then what God, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and but he don't know my God. This man does not know my God. Well, he going he, he gonna learn today. Yeah. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Come on. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of his strongest soldiers. He said his strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is like modern-day firemen, right? I mean, that's what I... I, I yeah, it they, they was, was all covered up right they were bound they were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace they fell the king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed his soldiers who took up Shadrach Meshach and Abednego God delivered them right there I mean that right there if that doesn't say something right there then anyway and these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped in, uh, to his feet in amazement and asked his, his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and three in the fire and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. 
he said, look, see, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. You may be seated. I mean, how do you know what the son of God looks like? I mean, they have to have seen something, right, in, in there. So who, who was present for Sunday service? Pastor ripped it up. He did. And if, if, if you missed it, if you didn't catch it, uh, watch the podcast and or um, catch the YouTube channel. We have a channel now. But look, I'm a little upset though. Because he kind of talked about me last Sunday. Did you guys catch that? You guys, you guys, you guys catch that? Who you telling, bro? Come on. In case it rains. Come on. In case it rains. And I want my, hey, 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 look, look, look. Come on. I want, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just. So I, I got a few points to make, and uh, because I see a lot of people in here, I think I'm going to, I'll probably be 25 minutes. If you make me sick, I'll probably be 20. <laughs> I got three points to make. Point number one, point number one, and I'm, we, we still talk, we, we're talking about the return of the ruler still, right? We're talking about the return of the ruler still. Uh, point number one, the return of the ruler destroys death and eliminates hate. This, was, this is good to me, man. Now, one of the ways that um, he destroys death, right, is by destroying the fear of death, right? I mean, a lot of us are afraid to die. If you know, if any of you guys have any, uh, if you know me, then you know that, that um, I'm doing it, Pastor Tria. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I can't help it. If you know me, that you know that I am afraid to fly. I'm afraid of planes. And it's not that I'm afraid to die, right? It's not that I'm afraid of dying. Because if you put me in a car and we're going to get into a car accident and you're coming towards me, I'm going to, you know what I mean? It's, it's, more, it's, it's, more of a, it's more of a control thing for me, right? It's more of a control thing for me. And see, I'm not a pilot. Right. And so and so if you if, if that plane is going down, there's nothing you could do. Right. You can't you. It's not like you could pull on a steering wheel and, and hit the brakes. You can't do that. Right. And so I was I was expressing this one time. I was I was spending some time with pastor. I was expressing this some, one time with him. And he he says to me, well, well, why? And I said, well, it's a control thing. I have no control of the plane. And he says, as opposed to what? I said, as opposed to a car or a motorcycle or a bike. And he straight up tells me, that's dumb. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> that's dumb. Right? God. <laughs> so then we started talking about, you know, ways that, that, that you know, we'd rather die. Right? And, and he says, he said, he said, no, I'm going to die of old age. Okay, yeah. He said, and then we started talking about this plane. We went back to this plane thing. And he goes, I know, I'll, I'll jump on a plane. I know I'm not supposed to die on a plane. Right? So I said, well, you know, I thought about that. And I said, well, if you ain't supposed to die on a plane, then I'm not supposed to die on a plane. Right? <laughs> and, and in thinking about that, right, I'm reminded of a scripture, right? And it's in 2 Timothy. It says, for God has, has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. See, See, if I'm going to get on a plane, right, and you're going to get on a plane, and we're going towards the same destination, you need to get on my plane because my plane, I know my plane has the hand of protection of God, right? I know that the plane that I'm going to get on, right, God is going to make sure that it takes off safely. The plane that I'm going to get on, God is going to make sure that it lands safely. So you want to travel with me. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they weren't afraid of death. The king, the king calls them over and, and, and says to them, listen, check it out. I'm going to play some music. 
right? And, and when, the, when the music plays, you guys are going to worship. The three young men said, you bugging. He says, I don't, we don't have to entertain you in this matter, right? Because surely our God will deliver us. But if he don't, just know that we're not going to serve your gods and we're not going to worship them. They weren't afraid of death. They weren't afraid of the idea of death. See, the Bible says that Jesus has the keys to Hades and death. The Bible also says that being absent from the body is being present with the Lord. And so what does that mean, right? That means that the moment that I die, I'll be in the presence of the Lord. What better place to be? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm so nervous. <laughs> so that point was, uh, lost my spot. The return of the root, there you go, destroys death and eliminates hate. So now I'm going to talk about hate. One of the ways that the ruler eliminates hate is by, re- is by removing hate from the believer's heart and replacing it with love. Christ didn't come to eliminate hate towards you. He came to eliminate hate through you. See, Jesus said, Jesus said, they hate you. They, if they hate you, just know they hated me first. So, and so he came to teach us how to live uh, how to love people even if they hate you. Dr. Martin Luther King said this. He says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out, drive out hate. Only love can do that. And I'm, I, I'm saying that in honor of Black History Month last month. But um, that word hate, 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 hate. You, you know what I hate for real? It's a strong word. But I... I hate cats. Hey, look at here. See, there's a reason why cats are associated with witches in Halloween. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason for that. If you got cats and you invited me over to your house for dinner, don't invite me over to your house for dinner. Don't do that. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just... I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Now, but I think cats are Luciferian. I swear I think they, they're Luciferian. My daughter loves cats. And oh, I, oh, oh, we got cat lover back there. I'm so sorry. I'm, so, I'm, I'm having fun back here. I'm having fun up here. I'm sorry. Okay, let's get off of the cats. But that word hate, that word hate. Um... Man, I hope I don't get beat up. I'm going to go out this door. I'm going to go out. So, so that word hate, you can't, you can't say you're a believer or a follower of Christ, but you have hate in your heart. You just can't. It, does, it's, it, it doesn't make no sense at all, at all. Like, there's a lot of things I don't like, but I don't hate anybody. Hate is a really, really strong word. Now, look, if you're a new believer, right, God is working those things out in you, right? He's going to work that out of you, right? But if you consider yourself a, a, a seasoned Christian, you can't have hate in your heart. You cannot. You can't, if you're a Christian, you can't say you hate Muslims. You can't say that. If, if you're a Christian, right, and this is, this is a little sensitive, you can't say you hate the, the uh, LGBTQT community. You can't say that. A little controversial here. If you're a Christian, you can't say you hate Donald Trump. You can't say that. See, Matthew says this. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. Foremost commandment. And then it says, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself a lot. Right? See, I make sure I take care of myself. I, I, I go once a week. I get a haircut. You know what I mean? I, I, I like to buy my fresh kicks. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I carry my bag, you know, just in case it gets, it rains outside. But, 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 <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just, I, I, it's a prop. I bought it for pastor. It's a prop. <laughs> I got like a bunch of Publix bags in my trunk. 
where was that? I don't even know where I was. Okay, so I love myself a lot. And I take care. I, I, I get a haircut once a week, right? And, and when my wife goes to the mall, I always tell her, baby, bring me a shirt. Because I want to look fresh. I want to have fresh gear. You know what I mean? So, so, so when, you, when, you see some, when you see me, you see someone presentable. You know what I mean? I don't like to go. If I'm, if I'm not shaved, you know there's something wrong with me. If I ain't get my hair cut, there's something wrong with me. I love myself, right? So, so he says, so if he says I have to love you like I love myself, then I need to love you a lot. Right? The Bible says this. It says that God is on the very top of the priorities of love, right? Right? You got to love him with all your, all your heart, soul, and mind, right? Then it says love your neighbor like yourself. But it also says that the second is like the first. So, so if it says that I, that, that I have to love you like I love myself, but the second is like the first, then I have to love you like I love God. Now, that's hard. That's hard, but I have to do it. Don't get me wrong. If I got to choose between you or God, I'm going to choose God. I've told this to my wife a couple times. I said, baby, you know I love you, right? But, but if I got to choose, I got to choose my God. Because he's been so good to me. So, so good to me. I'm so unworthy. It doesn't say, you know, I got to love you like I love God, but it doesn't say that I got to worship you like I worship God. Because worship belongs to the Lord. You've heard pastors say this. I know this, I know a godly uh, woman um, that she has, um, she has two boys. And one of the boys that she, she has um, is after her own heart. And this young man he, he, he takes her, he would take her to church um, and then he would take her out to eat after, you know, after church and he would spend a whole lot of time with her, right? The other young man would, was always hanging out, doing drugs, drinking, got in trouble with the law a couple times, but he still loved his mother, right? And so the latter uh, child one day says to his mom, mom, if, if my brother was drowning, in the ocean would you save him and and the mom said of course I would mom if I was drowning in the ocean would you say this is a true story guys if I was drowning drowning would you save me and she said of course I would if we were both drowning who would you save you want to know her, what her answer was if, we, if, you, if you were both drowning, then the three of us will die together. Wow. See, this is the love, the type of love that Jesus has for us. And this is the type of love that, that, that uh, listen, anyway. This is the type of love that he has for us. This is the type of love that we got to show people. This is the type of love that we got to express to others. This is the type of love that he, that he has for you, that he's willing to take a risk because he did that. Jesus loved us so hard that he, he was never, ever, 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 not one time concerned about his own safety. Never. See, when he replaces uh, your hate with his love, pride is eliminated. Right? You gain compassion. You become patient. And you learn to forgive. And that's probably the hardest for me. I'm, I'm being real. First Corinthians says love is patient, love is kind. It doesn't envy, it doesn't boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dis dishonor others. It, it doesn't, it's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It, it doesn't delight in evil, but it rejoices in truth. It protects, it trusts, and always hopes, and always perseveres. These are the things that are evident when he eliminates hate in your life. Point number two. The return of the ruler brings certainty to an uncertain future. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that no matter what happened to them, they were operating in God's will. And, and that God will deliver, will deliver them from, the, from their enemy. They were certain. They were certain that they would be delivered. Certain, certain, that word certain. Certain is another word for confident. Confident. Being confident of this, that he who began a, a good work in you will carry it to, unto completion until the day of Christ Jesus. 
my wife, um, give me a little bit more. Up, up, up. <laughs> my, my wife, uh, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, she, she lost her job. And, you know, initially, I panicked, initially. But when I saw that she had this, this calmness about her, um, her calmness, because she's never calm when it comes to something like that. Her calmness, uh, you know, reminded me, you know, of God's faithfulness uh, in our lives. You see, we were faithful tithers. We still are. We, we're faithful tithers, right? And so we weren't worried because, because we tithe. See, we, we, we weren't worried because we don't, we don't cheat God. We weren't worried because we don't steal from God. And because we're tied, because we tied and we're confident, uh, we were confident that we would be taken care of. See, God says, test me in this area. This is the only area in the Bible that God says, I'm, I'm setting up, I'm setting up the, the offering for you guys. <laughs> See, God says, test me in this area. Right? And this is the only area in, in the Bible where God says you're able to test them, right? And if, if we would, even, even if, even if we would have had financial struggles, right, we would still worship him. But listen, we would still serve him. But considering the situation, right, and, and our overhead at the time was, was ridiculous, it wouldn't have made sense at the time. It would not have made sense at the time if he wouldn't, wouldn't, would not have provided for us, right? That would, that would have made him a liar. God's not a, a man that he should lie. Even if we would have had to eat uh, uh, white rice and fried eggs, spam ham or corned beef and crackers, bread and mayonnaise or french fries and eggs, we would have still worshipped him. It don't matter. It don't matter. That would have been only a temporary situation for me. Because my worship, regardless, belongs to him. My hallelujah belongs to him. All of that to say this, right? My God kept his promise. He provided resources, made sure that I had an overflow of work for those four months. He proved his word to be true. Our lifestyle for the next four months never changed. Not one time. Not, we, we still kept our date nights. And in addition to that, we were still able to tithe like if she didn't even lose her job. That's my God right there. That's my God right there. Man, I'm almost done. I'm like flying through this. Ricky's going to get mad at me. The return of the ruler restores true freedom. The return of the ruler restores true freedom. Now, true freedom, this, this is going to sound a little funny to some of you guys. I hope you guys get this. True freedom is being enslaved to the will of God. That's what true freedom is. See, Romans 6.18 says, And having set free from sin, he became slaves of righteousness. He became slaves of righteousness. I'm sorry. Have we, have we, we've become slaves of righteousness. See, true righteousness can only come from God. True righteousness. Uh, this righteousness is given through faith in Christ Jesus to all who, be, who believe. We need to be arrested by the Holy Spirit. If you want to experience true freedom, you need to be arrested by the Holy Ghost. Freedom, freedom. I'm going to read the meaning of freedom. The power of right to act, speak or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. That's, that's a lie. That's not the freedom I'm talking about. That's the one in your Webster's Dictionary. There's a second one in there. It says, the state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. Spiritually. That's the freedom I'm talking about. Now, I have this freedom, right, that I really, really, really enjoy. And it, the, the freedom that I have, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm wrapping it. <laughs> Man, I'm quick, too. I just breeze through my notes. Um... Another form of freedom for me is the ability to serve. I, I get, this, I get this, this, this satisfaction when I serve, when I serve people, when I serve in the church, when I serve 
our young people, our youth, I get this, this sense of freedom, right? Um, and it's, and it's um, how can I say it? It's, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, I, I'm, I'm, very gra- I'm very grateful that I get to do that in, in this church. Um, pastor texted me the one day, and he said, <laughs> are you texting me now? Because <laughs> I don't have my phone. But tax, but tax, pastor texted me. I was, I went to the movies with my wife and my son, and he, and he texted me, and he put four, three, three, four. Sorry, three, four. That's all he puts. I knew immediately, immediately, and I'm like, oh gosh, don't ask me what I watched because I don't know what the heck they were playing. But listen, honestly, I thought about that. And while I was studying for this, you know, God, God spoke to me. He said, yeah, I told him. I told him to. I told him to. And, I, and immediately I, I thought to myself, I said, God, you told him to tell me so that, I, so that I can talk to them about you. But I'm so unworthy. I'm so unschooled. I'm so unqualified. See, God qualifies the unqualified. I love, I love to serve. I love to serve here. I read this from somebody and it says this. It says, the earthly battle for freedom is, is so that we will be slave to no one. The Christian faith calls us from slavery to sin and Satan so that we can be free to serve our neighbor. Free to, ser- free to serve gives us a whole new perspective on how to live as God's special people. To find joy in being a servant may take some real soul searching, soul, soul searching on our part. But as Jesus says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. Amen. God is so good. And with that, my friends, I am all done. So let me pray. Let me pray us out. Why you give me just a dollar? Just a dollar you gave me? Just a dollar? What? <laughs> Father God, we thank you, Father God, for today, Lord. Father God, I pray.